Hello and welcome to Miss Charlotte Astrology. My name is Charlotte. I'm a full-time working astrologer and on this channel I analyze astrological charts of public figures and very often they are celebrities and that will be the case today except these people are super special. They were celebrities in their time but their legacies and the mythology behind both of them extends, expands beyond the short amount of time that they were here on earth. They are icons. They are figureheads of the industries which made them and they are the ultimate movie star, <laughs> in my mind, the only real movie star, Marilyn Monroe, the patron saint of my channel, of my life, the inspiration behind all of my artistic and intellectual endeavors. Marilyn Monroe. She's like, she really, like, I have such affection for her. Like, <sighs> love you, Marilyn, doing this for you. Um, and her hu husband or ex-husband, Jolton Joe DiMaggio, who was kind of like, this is how big he was. And I don't know much about baseball, but from what I understand, he was like the Michael Jordan of baseball in the 1930s and 40s. That's what I understand. Like he was just this, he was like a Hercules or a Titan or something like that. Like just, you know, like an, an American hero. Is that like, do I have lipstick? Anyway, he was like, an, he, yeah, <laughs> he's an American hero. They called him Jolton Joe DiMaggio. He even had a freaking theme song. I think they both actually had theme songs. <laughs> that was released on that were that were released on radio back in the day. Really interesting. Uh, so these two got married. They were together for like I think all up about five or six years. They got together in the early early fifties, like fifty one, and um, and then they got married in fifty four. And then they were married for only ten months uh, because basically he abused her and then she left him. Um, but they stayed in contact up until when she died. Like he saved her from a mental institution. Like he actually like broke in there with his posse and he was like, give me my girl. Like, oh, oh, I know he was a prick, but like, he's such an, he's the white knight. Like truly he is. So what I wanted to do was talk about their chemistry, their attraction, like why, like what was going on with these two? Cause they're hella chaos, but there's a lot of love here as well. Um, and hopefully I can do them justice. But before I, before I dive in, I just want you guys to know, I don't know if they're all sold up, sold out by the time you see this. Um, but I, I currently have 20% off my MP3 readings. Um, the spots might be filled up already by the time you see this. If not, I'm still offering MP3 readings at the regular price. Um, but just keep in mind that the prices will be changing. I'm slowly transitioning into a new business model just to make it more sustainable for me both and like to main like help me with my energy because my energy levels need to it needs to be fixed I'm not I'll be honest guys I'm not okay like I'm kind of mentally ill and physically ill right now and I think it has a lot to do with my sleep schedule my work schedule and doing 60 minute readings for the last four and a half years has taken a lot out of me I will bring them back at some point I don't know when but until then I'm going to be just doing mp3 readings and um not as many. I've paid off my student debt pretty much and thank you so much for that, but I need to start taking care of me and make a more manageable, create a, like I need work-life balance. I really do. So thank you to those of you who did book readings with me, who have supported me, um, and I continue to thank you for all of that, um, but I need to change my model. I really do. So jump on that now if you can, if there are available if the, if the, if there if there are readings available, please purchase them now. <laughs> they do fill up fast. Okay, so let's dive in to Marilyn and Joe's sinister chart. So Marilyn is the inner circle. She's the blue planet. So as you can see, she's a Gemini, Sun, and Mercury. Her Venus is in Aries with Chiron. Her Mars is in Pisces. Her moon is in Aquarius and her rising is in Leo. Joe is the outer circle with the red planets. He has a Sagittarius stellium containing the sun, Venus and Mars, and of course his rising sign. And then he's also got a Mercury in Scorpio. And then he has a moon in Pisces, and that's also with Chiron. So both of them have intimate feminine planets with Chiron there. So there's some wound around relationships and intimacy for both of them. Now, um, there's a lot going on here. They got a lot of blue, but they got a lot of red. So there's a, quite a lot of conflict. Okay, there's a lot of push and pull here. Um, let's move down because I've put them into sections here. Okay, the ideal partner, Marilyn's son and Mercury conjunct Joe's descendant. Here's the thing, and this is probably why they lasted 
for so long is because Marilyn is his type. Like Marilyn... And if you look at Joe DiMaggio's previous marriage, he was married to a woman who was a petite, blonde, I think she was an actress as well. Um, he was attracted to that Gemini energy. You know, Gemini was his ideal partner. He is a hell of a lot of Sagittarius, Sagittarius rising, Sagittarius stellium, and having someone with a Gemini placement that balances, it balances out his chart. And Marilyn did that. And, you know, this is a pretty close, this is a pretty close, like, that's a, that's a conjunction. Like, that's a Sun and Mercury in the 10th house. It's very favorable to friendship and partnership. It's also the open enemy's house, which she did turn into. Anyone that is in your 7th house, you can love them a lot and you could probably have a really great relationship. But keep in mind, the person that's closest to you in that partnership house can also be an open enemy like you're gonna fight that's kind of just like part of being in a relationship is that you are going to have disagreements and you are going to have to fight at some point and they do a lot of that and the sons are not like they have a clash of egos or a, not even a clash I would say it's a standoff because he's a Sag son she's a Gemini son and they're just literally poles they're just a pole like poles apart like worlds apart and there was the standoff. So we'll get into that. But otherwise, she did represent the archetype, the type of woman that he was attracted to, that crazy Gemini, creative, flirtatious woman. Like, that's what he liked. Um, but it's weird because the, the thing that he loved about her was also the thing that he eventually despised in her or resented in her was that she was this fun, flirty person that could light up a room he loved that about it but then he resented her for it because he was a jealous man so um his Lilith is on her midheaven he did not want her to work and being with her actually work like made made her image worse like sorry him being with her negatively impacted her image amongst um the you know the general population the, the the audience so if you think of you know you know how Harry and Meghan are together and people think that um, you know, they think that Megan is this evil woman who is using her sexual wiles, her feminine wiles to control a man and manipulate him. Yeah, all that. That's kind of what people felt, felt about Marilyn. She was dating the boy next door. She was dating Jolt and Joe DiMaggio. She was dating Hercules. She was dating you know, a titan. She was dating, some, or even married, she married him eventually. She was, she was, he was the boy next door. And his midheaven's Virgo, by the way. So he had a pretty clean image, like a boy next door image. When they got together, his Lilith on her, on her midheaven made her look like a bad girl. Like she wasn't good enough for him. She was a slut. She was like, that's what people say about Meghan Markle. They say the same shit people say about Meghan Markle in regards to her being with Harry or Harry is the same thing that, that people said about Marilyn being with Joe. So a good little story for you. Cause I know this for sure. Cause I've read so many biographies about Marilyn. When Marilyn announced her divorce on the front lawn of her, was it her lawyer's house or her house? It doesn't matter. She announced her uh, divorce with her lawyer with a microphone and then they walked off the stage and they're walking to a car. Someone handed her a note and basically in the note, it's it called her a slut. Like someone handed her a note calling her a slut. And you can see in the footage, this black and white grainy footage, she's burst into tears in the car. That's how she was, like, it was disgusting. Disgusting disgusting she had to walk through a crowd of people and then she got handed a note saying that she was a slut and he beat her like joe beat the shit out of her like so unfair anyway um marilyn's midheaven ruler venus does line a conjunction with chiron like the chiron venus that's like I think my my mom actually had this. Um, that she, wounded self esteem, like just not, she just like her sense of self worth was just so dependent on men and or, or 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 lovers, and she's looking to heal herself through love, and especially with her Venus in Aries in her ninth house, she's attracted to older men or she's attracted to foreign men, and she she didn't <laughs> she, she, Shelley Winters who who was her roommate 
for a while said Marilyn didn't like anyone under 50. <laughs> so it's actually a miracle that she actually liked Joe DiMaggio, who was only like 11 years older than her. But Marilyn had an attraction for an affinity with older men and she wanted someone who was intellectual, who knew about the world. She was always looking for partners that could expand her spiritually and intellectually. And you can see that in her choices of, you know, boyfriends and husbands throughout throughout the years. And it was she had just had a very wounded heart. I think a lot of things happened to her when she was a child. Like she was molested. Like she was. She was um there's a story of her being literally sodomized by um, a gardener at an orphanage. Like that happened. And when she named him and pointed him out, they said that she was a liar. And she was, I think, like eight or 10 years old or something. Like really awful experiences. So, of course, she's going to be attracted to older men because she's looking for sanctuary. But she's also trying to heal whatever wound she has from that horrible experience as a child. And that midheaven ruler, Venus, like Venus is her midheaven ruler. Her wounded heart is going to dictate how her career goes. And and her lovers are very intertwined with her career. Like she she did fall in love or she did carry out relationships with people in the industry for survival, just like she did in the orphanage. You know, it's like it's just it's very painful here. Um her Venus and Chiron and part of fortune as well are all in Joe's fifth house of leisure and pleasure and dating. I think that they really enjoyed, like apparently sex with him was fantastic. Um, it wasn't scary. It wasn't painful. I think she felt very safe with him and he wanted to make her feel that way. Um, I think he understood her. I think he really did. And I think s sex was safe with him for them. Like until he, of course he, beat the shit out of her but I think that there, there was a lot of joy between both of them they enjoyed dating each other uh, and then it became serious <laughs> and then it turned to crap domestic war Pisces and Aquarius conjunction so there's a lot of passion here but there's a lot of volatility here with all of this um now a Mars and moon conjunction can be very hot um you know moon is feelings right moon is moon is like the moon is emotional processing. The moon is the domestic sphere. The moon is the mother. The moon is like that, that secret, marshmallowy, vulnerable part of yourself. His is in Pisces with Chiron. He does have a wound with women. I think, I wonder if he had a bit of a Madonna Hall complex and that might have come from him growing up very strictly Catholic Italian and women have to be a certain way and they've got to, yeah, they've, they've got to, fall in line and like he seemed he seemed quite traditional but he has a very much a wound around women with this chiral moon conjunction I'm wondering if his mum was I'm questioning if his mum was battered a bit if he witnessed that um I think because he because he he battered women himself obviously he battered Marilyn um but I'm also wondering if I think he felt bad about that. From what I understand, he felt bad about that. But he's also looking to save women. Like, he's looking to save Marilyn. And if his mum was battered, I wonder how many times he had to come to her defence or, you know, take care of her. Or, like, he's just got a very complicated relationship with women because, you know, on one end he is this hyper-masculine, machismo Italian dude. And then on the other end of the spectrum, he's just trying to, like, make sure mummy's okay. You know, so he's, it's, it's a very difficult Chiron moon conjunction here in Pisces and he's super sensitive and he's very intuitive with, with her feelings. And I think with the feelings of people in general, um, the Mars conjunction here, well, Mars is sex. Marilyn had a Mars in Pisces and I, um, I mean, I do, <laughs> that's what I refer to as the hooker Mars. Okay, like I, <laughs> there was a lack of boundaries with sex. I think she was, and I mentioned this like just earlier that she was abused. She is a Mars in the eighth house in Pisces. That's someone who has had sex used against her. Sex was a form, was a tool of abuse as much as it was a tool of pleasure. So obviously she's got a very complicated relationship with sex um, with this Mars in Pisces in the eighth house. Um, now that is 
in a conjunction with his moon. So obviously, obviously sex with her made him very emotionally attached. And I think she potentially, because Mars is the masculine planet. She's the woman in the relationship, but Mars is the masculine planet here. The moon is the feminine. She had a lot of control. She had a lot of power over him sexually. Uranus is also here not far away. So she brings not out of, not this is not a conscious thing because Uranus is a, is a planet that governs, um, it's a generational planet. So it doesn't necessarily mean she means to do this, but she brings chaos to his domestic world. Uranus is a public planet, the planet of chaos and progress. And it's with her Mars. So she's very ambitious. She's, she's wanting to innovate and be creative. If you've got a Mars and um, a Mars and Uranus conjunction, you're always looking to improve and progress and innovate and be, it's, it could be potentially very artistic, very ambitious. And that is bringing, um, that is bringing chaos to his domestic sphere, to his IC. Cause this is, this moon is on his IC. He's a very private man. He's a very sensitive man. And her ambitions are getting in the way of his domestic bliss. And that pisses him off. And I'm wondering if she could be mean to him as well. I'm wondering if Marilyn mouthed off to him. And that would have hurt his feelings. And then maybe he smacked her. I'm wondering how that played out. Um, I'm just, I, this is just, this is me just pondering. I'm not actually saying that happened. But it looks very volatile. It looks very passionate and loving, but it also looks very volatile. Also, her Juno is here. Juno is the asteroid of commitment. And I said earlier in a, the Liz Taylor reading, uh, uh, Juno is not the romantic part of marriage. It's the thing that's going to get you to sign on the dotted line. It's the thing that's going to take a dating relationship into a serious contractual contractual relationship. And he's got a placement on her Juno. He is the husband. Like he represents a lot of that. Um, he represents the husband archetype in a similar way that she represents the ideal partner for him with her Gemini placements in his in his seventh um but yeah she just brings a lot of chaos to his to his world her ambition is a bit of a put off for him and he wanted her to retire from acting and just raise a thousand babies with him and she just wasn't about that I mean I think eventually she wanted children she just wasn't ready at that point she was only in her like mid to late 20s when they got married she was like I got shit to do <laughs> so yeah. Okay. So let's um have a look at this Aquarius. Now she is an Aquarius moon, very difficult relationships with their mother's Aquarius moons. Such a sense. I love you guys. I love an Aquarius moon, very sweet, sensitive people, but they can turn off their, they can turn off their feelings like to self, to, for self-preservation uh, with the Jupiter conjunction, incredibly generous, incredibly humanitarian. Like she was someone that she just did good stuff for people. She just didn't, like ever like do you know the story of her and Ella Fitzgerald she didn't have to do that she didn't you know this wasn't and by the way this she didn't do that for clout she did it because she was a fan she did it because she was a fan of Ella Fitzgerald and she just wanted Ella to fucking sing and get paid like she just really like so she she lobbied man she like, she got political she's like I want Ella Fitzgerald up there she also like I hear stories about Marilyn like going when she lived in New York there were boys that would trap pigeons and she would pay them like a hundred bucks or something and she would release the pigeons like she's a good girl but the Aquarius moon is so detached from the mother and detached from the family and because her moon is in the seventh house she's very codependent like once she she would hop it from one relationship to another. That's what a lot of seventh houses do. That's what Le Libra moon. I'm a Libra moon. Oh God, I'm not that I've done that, but like, there's a there's there's the inclination to do that. Actually, maybe in my early twenties, I kind of did that. But, <laughs> um, but yeah. So she seeks family and intimacy through the seventh house of partnership. Uh, I think she might have had the she might have overshared a bit with this placement, um, and the Jupiter just makes her generous, and the Jupiter Moon conjunction could be a bit of a fame indicator as well, especially since these are really nicely aspected. So we'll have a look at the aspects at the end. Uh, they have a Jupiter. Jupiter is the husband as well, like Jupiter's marriage. Both of their Jupiters in Aquarius, they're eleven, twelve years apart in age. Um, kind of like the way Brad and Angelina, they have the same Jupiter in Aries. People that have a twelve eight year age difference, it can be actually really. Uh, good for marriage. I mean, I feel like those two examples of Brad and 
Angie and Marilyn and Joe. They're probably not the best examples of functional marriages, but I'm just letting you know having Jupiter in the same sign is just, or Jupiter's in a conjunction is nice. It's a nice synastry, just so you know. Um, yeah. And then his Jupiter, the planet of abundance of marriage, is in her seventh house of partnership. So already, like, we've got both of both of them have really nice placements in each other's seventh houses. Fantastic. Um his Uranus is also here. It's not a big deal. Yeah, it's not a big deal. I feel because Uranus governs like Aquarius. So it's like it's just it's kind of adding to the chaos. I feel like through him she met a lot of other people. Um, I know that he was really close to Frank Sinatra and the mob. And so obviously, you know, being involved with Joe DiMaggio was going to expand her social circles. Aquarius is a social sign. Seventh house is a social house. Aquarius is a social planet, as is Jupiter. So like there are networks expanded together for sure. The father wound infection, Joe's Mercury conjunct Saturn in Marilyn's fourth house. He's got a lot of stuff in her fourth slash fifth house. So if you look at Marilyn's chart like as a whole, and we're going to get there at the end. She's very top heavy with her chart. A lot of her placements are at the top of, of the horizon line. And that's why she was very invested in her career and being, you know, socializing, like being a party girl for her was part of the job. Um, there were reports of her being incredibly shy, but I think she was just incredibly exhausted. She, and she's a Gemini. She can switch from being introverted to extroverted. Like it's they're mutable, right? Now, a lot of her chart is like, her chart is empty at the bottom. The only thing she has there is Saturn in the fourth, which is a difficult placement that it could play out so many different ways. Poverty as a child, abandonment, mum's gone, dad's gone. Um, there's the planet of restriction and karma and difficulty lying in the fourth house where she rests her head. And she had all of those things, mommy issues, daddy issues, um, uh, no money, like, like literally growing up in poverty as a, like a very undernourished child, like it was sad for like, you know, she was passed around from foster home to foster home being molested by more than one. Like the, the kids in the foster care system in the 1920s and 30s, or even now, like, oh my goodness, like the horrors, the horror, the horror. Um, now this is a very painful house for her. So for him to have Mercury here, it's going to tickle that satin. He's going to feel like a daddy figure. He's going to feel like, yes, a husband, but he's also, because he's a, quite a bit older than her, he feels like like an authority, patriarchal father figure as well, which is something she's attracted to and something she needs, but also eventually something she resented because his placement's at the top of her chart. He's bringing her to the to the foundations of her chart, which is very uncomfortable. I want you to have babies. I want you to be married to me. I want you to be a housewife. And I think part of her wanted that, but she's, she's a career woman. And his Sagittarius placements, which are not too far away, right? Like they, they're also in this fourth house playing into her fifth. I mean, play, it's, and they're not nicely aspected. It's a very direct opposition to her Gemini placements. He's like, you're not going to work. And she's like, yes, I am. And then it's a stalemate. So yeah, the, I mean, as much as, you know, they are attracted to each other and she represents the ideal woman that he wants to be with, she's also a nightmare because she's not cooperating and he's not negotiating with her. And she's not going to negotiate with him either. So it, it just didn't, it just didn't work. And also he's a first houser and he's a Sag stellium. He could be a real prick. I know he has got a sweet little Pisces moon. Like the Pisces moon is cute and very kind and empathetic and loving. But then that it's, it squares off with all this arrogant Sagittarius shit. This fuck boy, Andrew Tate level shit. Motherfucker try to sat me. I would like, <laughs> I'll ruin your life. Like, nah, I've, I've dealt with Sag dudes. I would never date a Sag dude just because they like to throw their weight around. And pff, I'm an Aries. I do the same things. It's just too much fire. Like they just, ah, Leo and Sagittarians are brother energy. They are not lover energy. That's for sure. But I get the appeal. Um, but yeah, so he's got all these planets in her fourth house, dragging her to the bottom of her house triggering all her trauma around men and commitment and daddy and like all this shit. It was hard for her to be with him. Yeah. And Mercury also in her fourth house, that's like, do this, do that, learn a cook, do that. Like it's, it's a bit bossy. It's a little bit bossy. 
And I think at the beginning she liked that structure and then eventually it just didn't work. It just didn't work. Um, also, it makes sense why he was in charge of when he was doing the when he was doing like all, all the organization for the funeral. Like he he took care of her personal effects, from what I understand. Like he was the one that took care of everything. So that makes sense why his placements were in her fourth house. All right, expanding horizons. Marilyn's Leo ascendant conjunct Joe's ninth house cusp. So being with being with her ex expanded his horizons too. I think he got a lot out of her in terms of that spiritual and intellectual expansion I was talking about. Um, his part of fortune's here. I'm wondering he, if he felt being with her was also disgracing because the ninth house is a public house as well. They did travel together and he hated it. So after they got married in 1954, they went to Korea. There was a war there, of course. As you Americans do. <laughs> I'm, I love you guys, but that war was a, a mess. Um, so she went to Korea to perform with the troops. He didn't like that. They went to Japan. He didn't like that because she was getting all the attention. And when you have a Malefic or Neptune, her, her, her um, Ascendant, her Neptune, her Lilith, she's got Sirius here. It's not, that's not too bad. But that's all that Malefic energy is playing out in his ninth house. And this tour was for him. Baseball was big in, in, in Japan and he was meant to be there on like a bit of a peacekeeping, like kind of Japanese America relations thing, right? It was meant to be about him and she just stole the show. Or her planet's just in his ninth house and he's like, she's still in the fucking show. Of course she of course she was. <laughs> she stole the show in both Korea and and Japan. So yeah. Malefic Stallion playing out in the ninth house. Um Okay, saving Cinderella, Joe's eighth house, Cancer, Saturn, and Pluto with Marilyn's twelfth house, North Node, Pluto, and Vesta. So he really, he really wanted to save her. Uh, Saturn is structure. He's got Pluto Saturn played out in his eighth house. I don't know about what his money was like. I assume he had a lot of money and he um, organized it in a way where he could leave some for his family. I feel like he would do that because Saturn playing out I know it's in guys I know this is like I guess technically in the seventh but because it's eighth house cusp is in cancer that Pluto and that Saturn plays into that um it speaks to family traumas I think he also has uh, had a brush with poverty or his family were poor at some point like there's a lot of money wounds here uh and so he might have been very interested in investments or um, yeah, just managing his money so that he can retire. Like, I think he was quite responsible the way he might've had a lot of heavy lessons with money. Um, so yeah, if you know more about, if you know anything else about him, um, Joe DiMaggio and his history with money, please put it in the comments. I'm not quite sure, but I'm just speculating here. Pluto and Saturn playing out in the eighth house can be difficult with money. Uh, but if they learn their lessons, they know how to put it away. So yeah, it's not in a conjunction. Uh, but Marilyn's North Node is in his eighth house. I feel like if they got married again, which apparently they were planning to do in 1962 before she died, they're planning to get married again. I don't know how true that is, but if they got divorced again, I think she would have taken his money. <laughs> she didn't, I don't, she wasn't a materialistic person, but, um, I was thinking back to Brad and, you know, Brad and Angelina, I think they have each other's satins in each other's eighth houses or is each other's north node something like that and they literally are like just it's dirty fighting over money still 10 years later they're just like still fighting over mm. that shit um i feel like it didn't play out with this way but i didn't play out that way for these two but i feel like if they got married again they might have gotten divorced again there's probably <laughs> Ugh. Um, he tried to save her. Saturn is that structure and her North Node is playing out in the 12th house where there is no structure. Literally North Node in Cancer is finding home, buying a home, which she did in the last six months of her life in a conjunction with Pluto, which is death. She died there playing out in the 12th house of drug addiction. That's exactly what happened. Her North Node literally tells you exactly what happened. Vesta is here, which is sacred protection. So she died in a situation where she was actually safe. So she was in her home. Her maid was there. Like, I don't know. Her maid is kind of shady. But ultimately, she was in her home that she bought on her own. That North Node in Cancer, that was her destiny. And once she had fulfilled her destiny of finding a home... 
buying a home, she died in her bed. North Node in Cancer is the bed. It's the home. Twelfth house is death. And Pluto is also death. And the twelfth house is like the legend, the mythology, right? She now exists as an icon, literally. She's her legend lives on longer than her. Like it's it's something else. She's was reborn. The day she died, she became something else. So it's very, it's very Christ coded. I'll tell you that North Node is very Christ coded. Not, I'm not saying that she is Jesus. Okay, I'd calm the fuck down. I'm talking about the archetype. Marilyn, in terms of her archetype, is the she's the female Christ, and she lives on in our collective memory, and she will continue to live on because that North Node is in the twelfth house. Uh, but yeah, his Saturn and Pluto. It's not in a conjunction, but it's there. Um, and his Neptune isn't far away. He's trying to save her. He's trying to give her structure, like eat this, you know, sit here, stay in the home. Let me help you. Let me save you. She not, she's not doing it because she chaotic <laughs> and, she, and she doesn't want someone to, she doesn't want any, she doesn't want anyone touching her or controlling her. She's sick of it. By the time she, like she hit 36 before she died, she was just, she wanted to be free, you know? And I think dying in her bed was ultimately freedom she can rest. Uh, so yeah, this is their whole chart. As you can see, you see this harsh opposition with, uh, yeah, this Gemini sun and, and Mercury and then his sun, sun and Venus and Mars opposite, like in Sagittarius opposite, like they are polar opposites, such polar opposites. I, I do think their common ground is probably their upbringing. Like I, he's, he's from an ethnically, religiously a very different family but they seem to they they know what hard work is they know what it is to be without money they know what it is to suffer and I think that's the thing that they understood in each other was that difficulty so they were yeah they were they were they were really good friends they remained really good friends I don't know how true it is that they would have remarried but I definitely think they after her relationship ended her Arthur Miller marriage he came back in the in the picture really quickly and um go look it up there's there's a whole there's lots of documentaries on it she was she was put into a, a mental institution a clinic or something and they wouldn't let her out she was freaking out those by the way in the 1960s those insane asylums those clinics they were not pleasant it's like girl interrupted insane, but worse. Like it was worse than that. Like it's electroshock therapy. I don't think they did that with her, but it was mental. He went in there with his like gangster mafia people and he's like, fucking give her back to me or I'm going to, he literally said, I will take this place apart brick by brick. That's what he said. And that's like, that's the such energy we like. That's like coming in and saving your girl. He's the white knight. So yeah, I like I like what they have here. I mean, him being an absolute bitch and beating her up, that's the one thing where I'm like, prick. That's the one thing where I'm like, unforgivable. Um, but he did apologize to her and he said he was stupid and he said, and he went to therapy. Did you know that? Marilyn broke up with him and he went to therapy. I love this character development. <laughs> anyway, um, that's all I got for you guys. Um, what do you think of their relationship? Are you a fan of Joe? I know some people hate his guts and I completely understand. I dislike Arthur Miller more. Libra bitch. We'll get into Arthur. Do you want me to do an Arthur Miller, Marilyn Monroe, Sinistry? I can do that. I feel like I should do that. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I should. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, and yeah, book reading if you'd like to support me. And yeah. Appreciate you. Bye. See you later. I'm just trying to turn this off now. My computer's acting up. Anyway, <laughs> bye guys. Thank you.